Let's just talk about a dramatic change here in the bottom line performance. The last time you guys reported quarterly results, you lost more than $100 million. And here in this quarter, you've posted a profit of nearly $16 million. What happened? Listen, um, you know, a lot was going on at Afria prior to this year in regards to, you know, a short report in regards to a hostile takeover. It was about focusing on the business and the getting the team to focus on, you know, getting our growth right, getting our process right, and getting our shipments out to, you know, the liquor control boards and our consumers wanted our products. And, you know, we had some change in personnel. We had some change at our Leamington facility and you saw the results for it. And, uh, you know, we are, yes, one of the first pot companies or cannabis companies to hit profitability, but there's a lot more to come at a free app. So the, uh, the, the, the language you had used earlier this year when you spoke to us about the black cloud that had been hanging over this company, do you feel like that cloud is gone? Listen, the black cloud, if you come back and look at it, listen, for sure. You know, we, we addressed the concern, you know, of the short report. You know, I talked about yesterday of us building a facility in Columbia. We got licenses to open up retail stores in Jamaica. Um, you know, there's a whole new C-suite in place. There's, you know, uh, the existing management team has stepped up. We now have licenses in all of Fria One. You know, the facility is full of plants. And with our numbers, you've seen it. You come back and look at our profitability in recreational, our overall profitability up 75%. You know, we're sitting with close to $600 million of cash, so our balance sheet is strong. And we're also one of the first cannabis companies to put out a forecast, you know, for 2020. You know, we'll, you know, we'll grow this business from $200 million to over $700 million of sales next year and look to make close to $100 million in EBITDA profit. So there's a lot going on in Fria. We sell in over, you know, 10 countries around the world. Our infrastructure will continue to grow. And, and the big thing is, is building our brands out there. And what I've said before is I want Afria to become a consumer packaged goods company that's selling consumer products. Um, you know, with Cannabis 2.0 coming into effect in October and coming up with edibles and drinks and vapes is a big opportunity. Um, it's a big opportunity. We obtained five licenses in Germany and to expand our German business, to expand our Italian business. Um, the, the good thing is, listen, when I walked into a free in January, everybody thought it was one big cloud. <clears throat> but I must tell you, there were some incredible assets, incredible people. We own some incredible assets around the world. Um, you know, Afria did not get the credit for what we have bought in Latin America, you know, what we bought, you know, around the rest of the world, uh, the Nuvera acquisitions. So it's just prioritizing, you know, what we needed to do. Um, there was a lots of silos and get those silos into one silo and you're seeing the results for it today. And listen, this is only in the last three to four months. Just think when we really get going here, what's going to happen at Afria? Well, since we are having a, a story about profit today, and as you know, for example, we saw high profile change in another well-known company at Canopy, Bruce Linton ousted. Uh, there's been a lot of focus on costs, the spending to grow these companies very quickly. Do you feel like for the sector overall, there could be a day of reckoning when it comes to addressing all that money that has been spent on a lot of different things? You know, great question. And, you know, I built the company for 25 years and we lived by our numbers, we died by our numbers. But <clears throat> at the end of the day, it's about, you know, profitability and shareholders want to see profitability. It's not about just you know, a black hole and spend, spend, spend. And one of the things, you know, I brought into uh, Freya is making sure we have processes in place. Everybody owns a number on the top line and the bottom line. And at the end of the day, you just can't burn capital. So with that, profitability is important to myself and profitability today is important across the organization. Yes, you have to invest to grow your brands. Brand equity, brand equity. Yes, you have to invest 
to build greenhouses, but nowhere near the way it has been done in the past. It's just not necessary. There's plenty of capacity out there. We have some of the most incredible facilities, the state of the art, you know, in a free of one and a free of diamond. You know, we will have some incredible facilities in Colombia, in Germany, um, and you know, look forward to growing a lot. Our, our, our brands are tremendous out there, and we look to grow our brands and get more and more distribution. This, uh, this earnings story, which is getting quite a response from the stock market, coming on another day of uncertainty from another industry player in CanTrust, which I'm sure you're familiar with at least some of the details that have been in the, in the headlines surrounding CanTrust. What have you made of that situation? Listen, at the end of the day, I think Health Canada has to go out and figure out what happened there. But, you know, from trust with investors, trust with consumers, and that's, you know, what we got to make sure consumers trust brands, trust the company. And, you know, what happened at CanTrust was not good for the industry, um, absolutely not good for CanTrust. But I think, you know, between Health Canada and the company and the new interim CEO, who I know, they'll figure it out and figure out what to do there. But again, it's out there building, you know, a strong company with strong governance, governance, strong processes in place, a strong management team, which ultimately brings credibility to the company. But, you know, one of the most important thing is this here. Where does our growth come from? It's taking sales away from the illicit market. And with that, the consumer's got to trust the brand, trust the quality, trust how it's grown. And that's what's important at Afria. So if I look at Afria, what is our key building blocks? It's our brands, it's our people. You know, when I got there, we put in place a 90-day strategy on what we were going to execute upon, you know, is making sure we execute on that strategy. And last but not least, how do we reward our shareholders with profitability? And, um, you know, in, in terms of drawing a parallel, very different situations, but obviously there was a time, we were just talking about that, when people wondered if Afria would be able to continue as an entity on its own, and some people having that same question around Cantrus today. Um, are you suggesting you think they're in a position to, to, to continue uh, on their own? Listen, I think the situation at Afria and the situation at Cantrus are totally two different situations. You know, I, I, again, I come back without knowing all the details and what Health Canada is going to do there. And again, listen, regaining the trust of the customer and regaining, a, you know, the trust of investors. But, you know, there, there's lots of work for them to do at CanTrust and Robert will be able to do that. You know, in regards to Afria, you know, we had, we, we had situations that we had to deal with. And again, you know, the, it, it goes back to building the brands and the customers and making sure that you have the product to sell. And again, we had an incredible blueprint in place at Afria where we had two great facilities, over 250,000 you know, uh, kilos of ability to grow cannabis. We have an incredible brand called Broken Coast. And with that, we had the ability to go out there and raise money and get to profitability. And that goes back and you know shows your investors and your customer and your consumers, hey, what an incredible company. But it all comes back to the leadership, what's in place there, and what's the leadership strategy and what's the strategic plan. Um, you know, everybody came back and look at the cannabis industry and said, hey, is there great governance in place? What I must tell you today, we have an incredible board of directors. The board of directors at Afria took action when they needed to and put the right things in place, made the right changes. So that's what, you know, investors are going to be looking at and consumers are going to be looking at what are the great brands out there. I think there's a lot of innovation. I got to tell you, I've been in the natural organic food industry for 25 years. And, you know, Irwin, the natural organic food industry... I'm sorry, we're, we're running out of time, but I, I do just because you've been talking about it. Would you have any interest in acquiring CanTrust if, if the right deal came uh, along? Listen, uh, there's interest in, and there's some great assets there. They have a major customer base. And, you know, as an entrepreneur and as a CEO, I always look for great opportunities.